I was told you had information about who killed my uh, husband and children. Paper that goes from like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. I would absolutely dig a hole for my wife if needed. Hello, and welcome to Untold Genius. I'm Art Fisher. The world of mathematics is an elusive one. Filled with numbers and symbols, it's enough to addle any person's mind. But there was one person who was able to untangle those symbols with a very powerful and surprising tool. And that man was Vladimir Borgovich. Vladimir Borgovich, born in St. Petersburg in 1963, the son of Yuri and Yurina Borgovich, two farmers without a dime between them, the victims of Soviet Russia. I remember when he was a little boy playing in backyard, and little Vladik, he used to do little uh, mathematical experiments on his friends, where um, he make friend into two. He would, um, how you say, uh, clone his friend. Clone went crazy, tried to kill whole town, like a Frankenstein monster. We had to kill six-year-old child and eat his flesh. Well, we didn't have to eat his flesh, but we did. What can I say? But despite the beauty of science or eating six-year-old children, one thing from my interview did stand out. The townspeople would drink his fish trying to get his brilliance. But uh, genius didn't come from his pee-pee. It came from hair. No, 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 that is not a thing. Your hair does not make you smart. We're just trying to figure out what happened. Look, this is not my area of expertise, but let me try to explain to you how the brain works. But what do it academics know about the roots of genius? I think Vladimir himself would know better. My hair does all my math. I just transcribe. And thanks to his magical hair, Vladimir went to Leningrad State University and became an unstoppable force of hair and math. I discovered Vladimir in my math textbook in seventh grade. And he was my... He was my sexual awakening. I mean, he was smart. He was really good at math. And he had these warm and kind eyes. Back in our village, everybody was very proud. We made Vladik Day, got statue and everything. We roasted pig and ate as a six-year-old boy. We did not have to, but we did. Vladimir was on top of the world, but there was something inside nagging at him. Every day at the university, Vladimir talked about one day stopping all of his normal stuff and finally trying to solve the WJKL conjecture. The history of the WJKL conjecture was that in 1837, a judge by the name of William James Canley Lambslord, hence WJKL, wrote in his notes, I have this before me a delightful proof for the henceforth known WJKL conjecture, named after me. But I refuse to share it with anyone. Good luck, chumps. And that was it. Nobody could figure out the proof. Okay, the WJKL conjecture. It's a little bit difficult to understand, but I'll try to make it simple. Imagine that you have two intersecting lines like this. And imagine that you're trying to figure out the fastest way to join those two intersecting lines to form a simplicial complex. See, if you label your graph and your vertices, in our case, we have four ways. A, B, B, C, A, D, B, Z. But the question asks for a generic case. That is, imagine that you have n intersecting lines and two n vertices. Can I form n square number of simplicial complexes such that all involving, and this is the important part, vertices W, J, K, L as central nodes of your adjacency matrix? See, it's a little complicated, but I believe it comes out in the picture clearly. 
After years of toiling and ceasing to wash his hair, Vladimir finally solved it in 2001. Soon after, Vladimir gave a rare interview with Moscow Television, and because nobody on our staff speaks Russian, we found a user, WhiteWrite88 on Reddit, to translate. It felt very nice to finally solve this equation, but the Jews control the media and have all the money. Vaccines cause autism and dicks out for Harambe. And when asked what he was going to do next, Vladimir said, I don't know. I don't know. Also, 9-11 was an inside job. Having accomplished everything he had set out to do, Vladimir was lost. So he swore to never do math ever again and that he would torture himself for what he had done. And then in a fit of rage, he locked himself into a room at the local library and he said these fateful words. You may bring me food. You may bring me drink. But I will never leave this room until I am cleansed. And then he proceeds to shave off every hair in his body and stays in that room for four years. Nobody knows what went on in that library. I imagine he found happiness. I imagine him with no shirt on. And the body of an angel, my Russian angel. And he says, I am happy, Michelle. I am happy and we will be together. I mean, that's, that's just me. <laughs> um, it's been three years since he left that room and nobody knows where he went. Until now. Uh, Vladimir, do you want any water? It had been three years since anybody had heard from him. After many hours of hard work, we at Untold Genius were finally able to track down Vladimir Borkovich. This was a man who spoke no English, and we hired a translator. But it turned out, we didn't even need him. You see, Sanka, the driver has to work harder than anyone. In the storage closet of that dilapidated library, Vladimir had nothing to do but watch the only movie they had. The 1993 Disney classic, Cool Runnings. <laughs> Over and over again, he watched this film that touched his tortured soul with its pitiless depiction of failure and loss. Tragically, in doing so, he lost the ability to communicate in any way other than through the dialogue of this children's movie. This is utterly preposterous. Not to mention, I mean, you don't just grow up speaking Russian, only one day to suddenly, magically, be able to converse in English, only with a heavily affected Afro-Caribbean dialect. It's just offensive, well, I think. But it was hard to take Dr. Ruth seriously when, in her own words, she admitted, This is not my area of expertise. Thus, unconvinced by Ruth Gray and her hysterical, irrational lady feelings, we were compelled to seek out a more expert opinion. I mean, how would you say that modern science could explain something like this? Because the thing about science, especially modern science, is that they don't really know anything. It's just theory. It's all theories. And Vladimir, he put those quote-unquote theories... You pretentious douchebag. Should I stop? Sarah, what are you doing? You here? think that just because you donate $50 to NPR, that gives you carte blanche to be an asshole. What are you, you don't have a job. You come here and you pretend to know things when you don't know anything. And now I find out that you fucked Diane. Oh, shit. Sarah, it's really not what it it's looks exactly like. It's exactly what it looks like. And we're done. When I get home tonight, I don't want to see any of your stuff in the apartment. Having now witnessed horrible, devastating, beautiful failure for ourselves, we felt ready to return to Vladimir. Ready for the truth. Vladimir, in light of all you've suffered, all you've been through, what would you say you've learned from your journey? Feel the rhythm. Feel the rhyme. Get on up. It's bobsled time. Truer words were never spoken. And now, we must leave Vladimir to his lonely fate, 
as we continue our journey down this icy track of tragedy, huddled together in the bobsled known as Untold Genius. Cool. Running. Just a younger thug. Rapzilla! Yeah.